Hello and welcome to our virtual curriculum night 2021. Uh, my name is Mr. Erb and I am your student's math two teacher. All right, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I am from originally Medina, Ohio. Uh, I'm a diehard Browns fan, which is actually going well for one of the first times in my life, so that's nice. Uh, I'm uh, going on year nine teaching here at Community House. I went to Bowling Green State University uh, which is up in Northwest Ohio uh, as a secondary teacher, but came down here, loved uh, community house and just kept teaching here. Uh, I lead math counts, math club and math madness. If your child is ever interested in any type of competitive or extracurricular math, uh, I'm the person to work with. Um, I'm a 2019 Pamst awardee, uh, a DOD STEM ambassador this year, and a Edith May uh, Slife awardee this year. I also wanna thank the parents who uh, nominated me for the, the latter of the awards uh, and, and thanking, for, thanking you guys to give me that opportunity to host the AMC eight and 10 for you. Uh, I'm also a uh, dad to a 16 month old, which is amazing, uh, just changing and growing every day. Love being a dad. So classroom expectations. Uh, the biggest thing that might be a little bit different this year for your students is that we have weekly homework turn-ins. So instead of checking homework every day, we check homework once a week. Uh, each homework, uh, each week of homework is worth 100 points. Um, so this has good and bad things, right? If you have an extracurricular activity, it's nice because maybe you just don't have time to do the homework on Tuesdays. You know you can put it off for later in the week and get it done. The bad thing, though, is if you're trying to put off too much homework, you're gonna fall behind and, and that's no good. Uh, always begin the warm up as soon as you uh, get in. Take all the notes and copy the examples. Uh, note taking is huge because that means we're paying attention, we're being engaged in the lesson. Um, turning any late work or corrections without being prompted. You know, with as many students as I teach, I don't have uh, the mental capacity to really know who was missing what and who had uh, to turn in late. So having them come to me and take that ownership is, is big. And the biggest thing is asking all the questions, right? Regardless of if your student is very proficient at math or struggling, asking questions is the, uh, the best way for success. Making sure that your question gets answered and making sure that you are uh, taking the initiative to say, okay, I didn't understand how you were teaching that example. Can you give me another one of these? I've had that a lot of times too. Hey, I kind of got what we talked about today in class and I have a couple more. The answer is always yes. Your student just has to ask. Uh, grading has changed a little bit this year as well. Still a 10 point scale. However, now we have different categories. So uh, perform is tests, uh, which is 50% of the grade. Rehearse is 30%, which is dealing with quizzes and prepares are pretty much uh, homework and classwork, things like that. Prepares are uh, graded for completion, right? I don't want your students to be uh, being penalized for making mistakes as they're learning a topic, whereas rehearse and perform um, you are going to be graded on that scale. Uh, rehearse and perform, you can uh, do corrections on and get up to an 80%, however, as this is a high school course, right? Um, and we also do corrections for tests and quizzes. So late work, say you are absent. If you are absent, uh, you're gonna initially get a zero uh, in the grade book. Now, as soon as you get back from your absence, you can show me all your work and get 100 points. However, if uh, you are missing work, uh, then it will go down uh, five points per day per assignment. So for example, let's say uh, you did all the homework except you forgot Thursday, right? So now you have an 80 out of 100. Then if you show me the next day that here, here's my Thursday's homework, I'm so sorry, I forgot, you'll get a 95 out of 100. However, if they take two days to turn in, now instead of a 95, it'd go down to a 90 and down to an 85 and 80 and so on and so forth. So uh, if they're missing a particular day, each day is roughly 20%. And overall for the week, if they are missing assignment, it's five points per day that is missing. Uh, the biggest thing is late work and missing work can quickly snowball. So make sure you're looking at, <clears throat> make sure you're looking at your child's grades on assignment at the beginning of the week, because that will tell you, did my child do the homework this week, right? And honestly, if they're not doing the homework, they're not really gonna be set up for the tests or quizzes. And, and that's the bigger, uh, essentially, assignment that's gonna be held against them. 
test corrections. So on every test, uh, students are going to do corrections. Whether they got a 25 or a 95, every student is going to be doing corrections. We always can learn from our mistakes, whether they be small or big. And we want to do that so that way we can continue to grow as students. Um, if your grade is between a 70 and 79, these corrections will bring it up to an 80. Uh, if it's below that, then potentially a retest. However, on these first couple of tests, we're just doing the uh, corrections is all we need to get it up to an 80. Uh, they have a two week period from getting back their test to doing the corrections. Um, usually I just try to assign it for the end of the week. Now, let's say your child has a 90 and they're doing corrections. What is the point of the corrections? Well, the corrections is actually one of their uh, homework grades as well. It'll go in as one of your homework assignments this week was doing corrections. So if they're not doing that, then they're obviously missing out on that assignment. If your student's absent, they can check the wiki for missing assignments. Um, you'll see at the top of each uh, of the wiki, you'll see a link where all the notes are if your student is absent. And under each day, you'll see assignments for homework, as well as any links or activities we did in class. The best thing they can also do is email me or phone a friend and uh, get caught up with whatever notes that they took in class compared to what would be on the wiki. Here's our general curriculum. Um, we do, we already started off with matrices. Uh, we're finishing up with geometry and constructions right now. Uh, next unit, we're gonna be doing triangle congruence. Then we move on to trig, modeling with geometry and transformations, uh, and then quadratics. After unit five, we're kind of out of the geometry section of the course, and we move back into the more comfortable algebra section for a lot of your students. So uh, if you see a student struggling, maybe after those first five units, they'll start to be a little bit uh, more comfortable as we head back into the algebra piece. So we go quadratics, functions, polynomials, rational functions, logs, trig graphs, the unit circle, and stats. I know this looks like a lot of curriculum. Um, however, it's really uh, meant to prepare your students for success in math two and math three and even beyond, right? We want to essentially give them that rigorous and uh, fast paced uh, course like they would see in high school. So that way they are ready to go. And really our end goal is preparing them for calculus once they get to high school, right? being able to move at that rapid pace and uh, cover a lot of material in a quick amount of time. As a parent, the best thing you can do is uh, checking the classwork slash uh, homework and making sure that they are doing that. Pretty much every night there's gonna be homework. Uh, you can use PowerSchool to check grades and assignments. And of course, always email me with concerns. Uh, send your child to tutoring. This is actually incorrect at the time. Uh, tutoring is on Thursdays usually. But I try to move it up um, with math three to see what's going to work best for you guys. Uh, and by you guys, I mean your students. Like, so for example, if they had a test Wednesday, tutoring on Thursdays isn't really going to be helpful, right? We need to move it to Monday to try to get them prepared. Um, the other big piece in terms of emailing me any concerns, we can always set up phone conferences or one on one conferences or a whole team conference. I am off team. Uh, so if you want to meet with just me in particular or me and a counselor, you can always uh, send me an email and work through that um, as well. Here's my contact info and here's my uh, website. We also do progress reports and report cards that you'll see again at the end of the quarter. And like I said, with any conference, uh, you can always feel free to send me an email. We can set any of those up that you may need. Uh, wish list. The only thing I really need is tissues and wipes. Uh, one of the great things about wearing masks this past year has been that we kind of avoided flu season a lot. Uh, hopefully that'll be the same thing now. We have a decent amount of tissues, but a couple more boxes never hurts. Um, wipes are also nice just for cleaning desks as well. Um, so thank you so much for coming to this virtual night. And if you made it all the way to the end, uh, I appreciate you. If you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to uh, email me and I'll get back to you within the day. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye.